Hi everybody, it's Monuente Reme. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, except I'm not going to be there this week, but my trusty co-host Tyson Strasberg will do an excellent job. Plus we have Elsa Kennedy, an amazing actress and musical talent, who will share some of her thoughts, her dangerous thoughts, and her music and movies with you, as well as an interesting topic, as always, so enjoy the show, and I'll see you next week. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Dangerous Thoughts with Manu and Tyson. Uh, today, I'm going to be subbing in as the host for Dangerous Thoughts, and with me, uh, the the lovely and brilliant... Uh, Elsa Kennedy has joined us, and uh, Elsa, I want to welcome you and and thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day. Uh, singer, songwriter, actress, um, I just I, I'm very very excited to watch uh, your your debut film. Um, Everything will be fine in the end. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else can see, but in the lower corner of my screen, it's playing right now. I had to run out and buy the video from Amazon Prime. It's just amazing. Uh, let's start with you, uh, Elsa. Tell us a little bit about this film and, and how you uh, came to be in it. Yeah. Well, it's first off, it's really lovely to be on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I... Um, honestly, this film was the little indie film that could. It started with such a tiny budget. Uh, it was basically zero budget. Um, and uh, so the writer, Joe Bartone, he accidentally made the casting notice uh, just a little misclick. He made it uh, like it was available across the entire world. And so he got auditions for this, this role of George uh, from all over the world. And, and I just... I chose this, uh, I chose the role through the script and I kind of just went for it. And um, I happened to have just gotten brain surgery. So I, you know, I was really feeling bold in my choices and um, I decided to go to Hollywood and make this film with uh, a bunch of strangers that happened to be wonderful, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Uh, and it turned out to be a triumph. And we have just been so blessed with so many wins, surprise, surprising wins in the festival circuit. And and uh, it's just exciting to see where it goes from here, you know? So, um, but yeah, that's that film. Uh, oh my gosh. And where are we going to watch the trailer, I think? I think we are. You want to roll the trailer? Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> George. If you just give it up, you'd have nothing left. Isn't that what you really want, to be free of everything? I think I prefer just sitting around slapping my monkey watching the world burn. <laughs> There's an entire continent of kangaroos hopping around on fire. Nope. I'm not rolling on buds. If I could have any superpower, be to forget. Ah. I don't love shit. I like to forget. Ah! Future shit, too. I mean, I like to forget the future. I'm going to be sad when you're gone. I look forward to that day. Sorry, Julia. You've got to scrub hard to get deep inside the hole. Down. Don't steal anything. Wouldn't dream of it. I'm taking your dogs. But I got a plan. How does I get your dog tag? Jesus Christ, George, you're not walking into another one of your shit storms. <laughs>
Will you ease up on her? That back there happened. Well, this is my first murder, Buzz. Ray is hurt. What happened? Okay, I was helping her move your body. I got her hidden safe. People get hurt around us. People die. She can't get enough of me. Women only feel love when they're being hurt. Said so the crooked little man was crooked little house. She loves me. <laughs> watching it uh probably about an hour ago and every time i i wanted to get up and uh you know use the bathroom or get up and get a drink of water or get up and i couldn't i was just but, but wait 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 okay in one minute uh okay wait wait when, what what's gonna happen now just <laughs> edge of your seat like you, you can't you can't turn away from this movie um i'm gonna tell all of our our friends listening and i i don't usually you know endorse or put my reputation go buy this movie if you have amazon you can buy it on amazon if you don't if you don't have an amazon account you can watch it on tubi for free with ads but we want to support our our artists our actors uh our actresses and we want to make sure that uh we show them the support that they show us when they they put their heart and soul into these movies uh elsa back to you just you know what was it like being on set um, what was it like making it? How much? How much of George is in Elsa? <laughs> well, those are three very different questions. They uh, are. <laughs> where Where should I start? Being on set was frenzied, chaotic collaboration. Like, and I think that that was the most surprising and most enjoyable part of it. I mean, everybody was doing everything all the time and it was 15 hour days and for like two months. Uh, and I learned so much at once, all at once, um, that it kind of was just this crazy whirlwind. Um, but it was some of the most fun that I've ever had ever. And it opened up this entire new world for me. Um, so I will forever be grateful for that. But I mean, it's a pretty intense movie. There's some really, there's some, there's some yeah. dark stuff that happens throughout the the course of it. So, um, and, and, you know, I think that we can all relate to darkness in some way, shape or form. Um, yes. I'm actually, I, one of the reasons why I was drawn to the role is because I'm really naturally a kind of a, a shy, um, well, I don't think, I don't know if people will call me shy, but I'm kind of a nervous like person and I'm very conflict avoidant. And I, I found this character who is so forthcoming and so angry and raw, but, but I don't know, and kind of, kind of rude it was it was something that i i was able to tap into some of my own anger uh which was really cool um so yeah i, I don't know if i answered all the questions no that was great and and one of the things that i noticed um and you're gonna have to tell me if it's true but i i felt it through the screen and that is when an actor they they kind of refer to it as, as method acting but you kind of become the character so you read the script you want you, you have to put yourself in that character's position like how you know with tyson right how would i feel if this is what my backstory my life you know the things going on how would i react and, and you got to put yourself in that mindset so it didn't look so much like elsa was acting the part it felt like we were really watching george <laughs> wow that is an incredible compliment. I mean, wow. Thank you, first of all. <laughs> um, you know, I I think that's a, a testament to Joe, um, as well as um, I, I have a lot of slash had, I have a lot of empathy for, for George. Um, and Joe worked really hard with us to foster like this compassion like no matter 
how dark of a person you are becoming, you are portraying, you know, in these scenes, in this story, you have to approach it with compassion first. You have to love your character in order to embody them. And um, I feel like I really got to a point to where I really cared about George and I cared about what happened to her. And in doing that, um, I was able to tap into so much, you know, in, re in response to these things that were unfolding around her, you know? So, um, but I, I, I deeply appreciate that. And, and I, I, um, yeah, you know, we had a, we had a very hardworking crew and a very hardworking team. So, uh, we made it, we made it through together. <laughs> it was hard though. It was emotional. We were all pretty like by the end of that, like, whoa. Yeah. Woohoo. I, I, and I'm telling you, I've, I, <clears throat> I was fortunate. Uh, Manu currently is, is working on Star Crew, his project. And, and I was invited to the studio and I got to play a, a Zombot, a non-speaking. I'll probably be in the film for a whole five seconds. Really excited, you know, calling Guinness. Hey, I, I'm going to be in there for five seconds. Uh, no speaking role, so no SAG, right? Uh, but just, you know, being there over the weekend and I, I cannot convey to the listeners enough what goes on in a film you 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 do a scene and you don't do the scene once right they they do a scene 15 20 times and they want to get this actor then this actor and then a long shot a medium shot a short shot and i watched this transgress just over the weekend two days mm -hmm. uh we started at like seven in the morning we ended at 10 o'clock at night hair and makeup uh it just and, and all of the people around, you know, for every one actor up there on the stage was probably a hundred supporting people. Uh, and that's not an exaggeration. I mean, the warehouse, the studio was just mm -hmm. filled with people and, and watching a shot be done over and over and over and over. And after, you know, two days of filming, they might've got 10 minutes, right? Like that, what is that like? I mean, do you ever just like, oh my God, we have to do this again. <laughs> we have to do this shot again. Oh my gosh, it's it's so <laughs> it's so hard. I mean, like the most exact like there's a scene where I beat up a car. And I mean, granted, I've learned after like retro like retroactively or retro I think that's the right word. Like you don't actually have to beat the car up when you're acting out, beating a car up. But I went like 100% in, I'm throwing my body against the car. I'm beating the sh shiz out of this car. And I ended up like, I, I was so sore the next day. Like I literally couldn't walk. And then I, oh my gosh, I got stung by a bee on set. Uh, and I'm oh, allergic no. to bees. Yeah, this actually, it was the, it was nearing the end of our first week and we'd been working 15 hour days and we were all just like physically already beat up. And um, this bee, like just kamikaze down out of, we're in the middle of Skid Row, like freaking, I, I get just in the middle of a parking lot for no freaking reason. This bee stings me. And I go into anaphylactic shock. Oh, <laughs> and, I, and I had to use an EpiPen twice. And then they had to call an ambulance. And I'm on the ground, and it smells like urine, and it's horrible. And I was dressed like a stripper, and and they carted me away. And Joe was like, "I'm gonna get sued. I, the movie's over. My lead actress is dead. Oh my god!" And everybody was freaking out. And then I ended up you know, two days in the hospital. We had a long weekend and I started back uh, on Monday. And, uh, you know, despite that, we kept going. Uh, so, you know, I would say it's kind of like a mind state of controlled, like, mental illness. <laughs> like, I just... It, it really <laughs> is. It is. <laughs> And 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 I I watch the actors and I watch them you know as the day progress become physically more exhausted and yeah maybe this is gonna sound wrong 
But sometimes, you know, when you are exhausted and you're supposed to do, let's say, a you know, a scene with anger or something, you're already exhausted. You're already, you know, at your limit, right? And then you have to do that scene for the 20th time and then boom, right? The yeah. anger is real. It's, it's like, God damn it. Arr, arr. And, and, <laughs> and the, the director's like, cut. We got it. That's, yes. that's what I was looking for. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's very relatable, yeah. It, it, you know, it, it's it's just amazing to watch the process. Uh, part of today's show, we're going to be talking about near-death experiences and, uh, you know, kind of what we think about the afterlife. I know there's a lot of religions out there. Reincarnation, uh, heaven or hell. Uh, some people believe we just, you know, we're gone, and, and that's the end. Um, but you've had not just the B incident, but a couple of, of near death experiences prior to filming. Um, you, you, uh, I'm going to say this, you had, you had brain surgery. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, tell us what happened. What, 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 what did that come to? And, and um, what did that mean to you? What, what, what did you feel? I mean, I, I don't know that we can all relate to that. So it's really good to get to talk to somebody who's experienced it. Yeah. Um, well, I appreciate getting to talk about it. Um, I mean, having any kind of chronic condition that, that, or like medical, something that happens that really just takes over your entire life. Um, it's very difficult. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, this particular surgery, I've had a lot of just random, crazy medical crises over the past 10 years, really. Um, This one was different. You know, Uh, I had, I I still do have cerebral aneurysms, but um, they, they had to like take off my top, the top of my spine, like, so my C1 Mm. and go, oh, sorry, this is probably gross. No, no, no. Keep going. Uh, you um, you lived through it. We're only having to hear it, but you you experienced this. Please. It's pretty gnarly. So like content warning for the but like so they had to like took they took off the top of my C1. They went through my skull and they put in they had to open the sacker on my brain and like make room for it cuz it had kind of fallen into my spinal cavity and it was blocking all the fluid and I was getting these aneurysms and all this stuff. So, um, the surgery, like I found out I needed brain surgery and like two weeks later it was happening. And we had just, we had just, uh, me, my partner and I had just gotten through living in our car for like six months and we didn't know it was during the pandemic and we'd just gotten back to Boston. Um, And so things were just really tough. Um, And to find out that I needed emergency brain surgery, you know, it was crazy. And then it happened and there was a a complication during uh, the the placement of a spinal drain um, because uh, I guess my intracranial pressure, it, it was very difficult to get my spinal fluid to come back down into my spinal cord, um, which caused my brain stem to herniate, uh, which typically is, it, I mean, it's, it, it's everything stops. So total death um, because it controls, that controls every part of your body and every reflex. And, um, and I remembered, cause I, I, I came to, out of the initial surgery. And then they had to put me under again to, cause there was something wrong with the drain and something like they needed to place it. And I remember this like kind of haziness, but I, and then it just, everything disappeared. And it was like this massive expanse. And there was this like net nettingness like these these fibers that kind of were glowing and they came down and i had to, i had to like there were there were like snapshots of my life like vo- like maybe voices or a memory or something but it was like 
I had to, I had to choose, I had to fight really hard to, to get caught back up in the net. And then like, there were, it was kind of like, I don't even know, like, getting like disjointed in- memories. Yeah. But yeah, but, it, but it was like, it, I don't know, getting sucked back into something from like, you get sucked into a black hole and then it's like, Oh wait, blah, 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 and then you get like sucked back out. Um, it was, but, but visually I can remember it was just, it was like almost like the 3d like characters that you see like for 3d animation when they have the netting. Um, but it was like coming to take me back into whatever this, this life. And and then I woke up in the ICU and uh, the right side of my tongue was paralyzed and the right side of my larynx. And so I couldn't talk and I couldn't swallow. And I had to go through speech therapy for like three months uh, to teach myself how to speak again. And part of the reason why I auditioned for Everything Will Be Fine in the End was because I couldn't sing. Um, when I came, oh man, I'm getting emotional. I did not even think I couldn't. Yeah. When I woke up, I couldn't sing. And, um, I knew that I needed to make money. I needed to do something I needed to. And I, like, I, I could start to speak again. I was speaking and I was teaching myself how to speak and reading from the dictionary and reading scripts. (laughs) And, And, uh, and so I, I decided to do this film because I was and, like, maybe, maybe I'll act, you know? And then- the, the, the film does deal with, with death, and I'm, I'm not going to give yeah. any anything away. But um, And then throughout the film, without, again, giving it away, there are there is behind you in the scene a reminder of, of a death that has occurred. And that, that goes on throughout the film. Um, Having experienced a, a near-death experience, um, it said that um, whatever makes Elsa Elsa, right? Whatever makes you you, is tethered to your corporeal body, your your physical body. Mm-hmm. And when we come close to death or, or or die, that tether is is broken, right? And and there's almost a sense of I, you know my being is no longer associated with my body and and i can imagine and and you can speak to this better but you know it it sounded like there was a desire to to reconnect that tether to come back to the body absolutely yeah that's yeah i couldn't have said it better myself absolutely yeah and and um and acting well, are we talking about acting or, or the experience of, of the near death? Uh, well, in a way, I mean, did that experience prepare you? Because there, uh, there's a lot of that near death and death yeah. in the movie. I mean, I, I think, I think absolutely. Yeah. I was, I was, I think I was scared and I didn't know how to process that. Um, I was really scared by what had happened and, I saw my, I, I don't know. I I thought about like, if I, you know, if that had, you know, been, been how it was supposed to be when my brainstem herniates, I wasn't supposed to wake up. Like, why, why did I wake up and what am I going to do, you know, with my freaking life? And, um, you know, uh, the impulsive decision to take this role, suddenly gave me a lot of responsibility that I, and I, I, I had to do this or else the film wouldn't happen. Like I had to make something happen. We had to make something happen. And in order for all of these parts to come together, this crazy whirlwind of a movie, for some reason, you know, Joe was supposed to accidentally make it available to people outside of Los Angeles. And I was, you know, one of, you know, I was supposed to see it at the top of my list on my casting notices. And it was all just, it's all very weird. You know, it's all very (laughs) universy. Well, there's a surrealness to it. Uh, You know, I'll tell you, I I was a huge fan of Star Trek. 
uh, always mm-hmm. have been. And Voyager was one of my favorite. And back in the late 90s, early 2000s, I, I watched Voyager. And I always kind of liked the Echeb character, which Manu plays. Uh, we're about four years apart age-wise. Um, and as a gay man, I, you know, I thought he was kind of cute. And uh, I'd always kind of like liked Echeb. He was one of my, my favorite characters. Then uh, a, a couple of years ago, I was watching Star Trek Picard. And uh, there was a scene where Echeb dies. And it didn't look like the Echeb I remembered. So I went to my phone and I looked up and, oh, it is a different actor. You know, 20 years had passed. I didn't know if, you know, the actor who played Echeb just looks different as an adult now. You know, I didn't know. I looked it up. Oh, it's a different actor. Well, whatever happened to the original actor? Did he die? Did he, like, why didn't he play Echeb? And I looked up and I found Twitter's, uh, I found Manu on Twitter and, uh, I followed him, and um, uh, he did a live show uh, on Twitter, a podcast called Manu's Dangerous Mind. And I remember listening to it one time. Uh, and then I remember seeing on my Twitter that he followed me back, and I, I went crazy. I was showing my mom. I did, look, 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 the guy that I liked from start, he's following me. You know, fast forward, it's two years. I'm his co-host. We're, uh, you know, really, really good friends. And... Uh, the serendipity that that you know for all those things that had to have happened for me to be sitting in this chair interviewing a a beautiful and talented actress uh to be friends with manu to have gone you know myself to a studio and and watched the filming process what are the odds because i just picked up my phone and wanted to see if that was the same character on picard that was on (laughs) voyager just i just happened to do that and life is weird that way it, 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 like weird. one one little thing and then your whole life changes yeah. um is there is there fate is there luck or what causes the butterfly effect. to happen the butterfly effect thank you <laughs> who knows maybe butterfly flaps its wings in in europe and there's a tornado in texas that's uh but yeah i don't know what's going on with my my video oh yeah i know is it no, fake? cheap is it a ghost? Uh, cheap cheap camera cheap, <laughs> uh, either that or i have pissed off some spirits <laughs> oh no I... thank god i didn't say i hope lightning strikes me if i should be lying <laughs> <laughs> but but so so tell me what do you believe is there fate is there serendipity is my camera working yet I, you know, I feel like just me and I, I can only speak for myself because I only know myself. That's all I got. But I, I feel like there are certain things that are written slash, like, I don't know, assigned slash we all have a purpose here, you know, no matter how short our life is. Uh, And there seems to be some kind of energy or force that guides us and our consciousness and the way that we think and opens up opportunities around us to make those things happen. I don't know what it is, you know, or, you know, if it's, if it's our own selves, just, I don't know, reaching out, reaching back, like interstellar wise and guiding us. I don't know. It's, it's something it's, it's the threads, you know, I, I, I agree. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I've, people think when they think of, um, science fiction they think of star wars for example and star wars talks about the force right this this universal energy that that binds all living creatures that you know it 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 flows through us it passes through us we're all connected and yet that almost feels real right not not just something written for a a sci-fi script but i do feel connected to you know life around me the universe and I think that's a very normal, natural, I think I, you know, for, for my opinion, I, I think that's, that really is what life, and, and I've said this on the show before, um, that 
we experience life through our five senses. We can see, taste, touch, smell, and hear. But that is because biologically, those are the senses we have. Yeah. But if you look at a de-evolved animal, an amoeba, you know, they don't have optical orbs. They can't see. They can't hear. They can't taste. All they can do is touch. They have the, the sensation of feeling. Yeah. That's their only sense. They would have no knowledge of what sight would be like, hearing would be like, what smell would be. You know, they, they just, they're biologically incapable of experiencing that, right? And as we evolved and we've, we, we, we parse out this, this, this spectrum to where we have the five senses. Well, what if there is six, seven, eight, nine, ten that like the amoeba we're yeah. unaware of? That reality, there's so much more to it, but we're just not biologically able to sense it. Like, does that does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. Like it's there, but we're just not. We can't really see it. And I wonder if within when our we, bodies, like within right. these bodies, yeah. Within yeah. that's that's the key within these bodies. Yeah. So I'm wondering when you had that, and maybe it wasn't even near death. Maybe you did briefly die for a moment. I, yeah. You had that that you know maybe you had that that ability to sense what you could not sense while you were still tethered. Yeah, it was like it was a brief moment of being of being separated, like truly, and then having to make having to and also being able to make the choice to get like you know grab on to back onto this life and this body and this storyline or whatever you know uh so yeah uh it definitely felt like a like a vacuum into something liminal a liminal space um right you know, Truly, just yeah, like the before for the before times, <laughs> before and and then coming back to the corporeal, right? Coming back to the body, uh, that that is amazing to me and interesting. And I could I could talk about that forever, but I'm I am going to switch just briefly uh, for for those uh, who are listening. As you saw the uh, the preview, uh, Elsa is a very 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 talented actress, but also singer songwriter and uh there's some music uh that i think uh i'd like to share with you guys uh cassie i'm going to ask you if you wouldn't mind uh rolling uh a little bit of the that music video a uh, couple maybe a montage of a couple and uh we'll see you back in just a few seconds and we'll talk about the music Everything's a 
That was amazing. I, I've I love that video. There's another one. There's another video that that I happened on um, yesterday uh, that I liked. It was called "I'm Not Ready." Oh yeah, yes. I love that one. Oh my gosh! Thank you, thank you so uh, much. And uh, you know, I'm I'm looking here also at the side. There's uh, Vienna. There's. Uh, <laughs> I was eagle. Uh, so many, so many songs to you know, and that's another thing. Uh, I I would ask if you guys, in addition to, uh, you got to watch the movie. You got to watch the movie. Uh, but uh, search Elsa Kennedy on YouTube. So many great songs. So many. And then after you like them, you heard them, you like them, go out and buy them. That's how we support our actors and actresses and our artists. So go buy those songs. Um, let me ask you. What is it like? I mean, I, I uh, you know, I, I've got a little. Oh, God, I, I guess I'm going to go there. My mom was a singer, uh, folk singer, folk mm -hmm. singer. So what that means is she had this huge fan base of 10 people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but. You know, so I had to grow up in a house where they were practicing and rehearsing, and they had a little studio downtown, and uh, they recorded three albums. Uh, from the from that perspective, you know, as a child watching his, uh, you know, mom being a singer, um, you know, I got a little bit of that. And you can see behind me, I, I there's a piano there. One day I'll learn how to play it. Uh, I did learn how to play guitar a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Um, but is it like what inspires you musically? Uh, what, what when you sit down to to write a song or to 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 play music? Like, is it is it um, is it family? Is it friends? Is it experiences you've had? Like, like what inspire? What's your muse? At that time, I'm gonna say, what's your muse? What's my muse? Well. Songwriting is is deeply personal for me and and in and of itself entered my life sort of as a an escape and a respite from you know everything else. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, but I as I've grown and as I've you know matured as a person, my songwriting uh, has has joined me, you know, has come along for the ride. And so I think a lot of the stuff that I have out um, is stuff that I wrote in my teens. And, uh, and so it's interesting. Uh, I'm preparing to release like my, my first studio record uh, that, that has been a massive, massive undertaking um, already, and it will be, uh, as we move forward with production. But, um, like, as I listen to the music that I, that I feel really speaks to my soul, like every time I actually, hold on. It's so, it's so difficult for me to even pin it down. If it's, if that makes sense, if it's not obvious, yeah. you know, it's like, it's such a part of who I am that songwriting just happens and it's always happened. And it, it, 
it kind of accompanies me through my own experiences when I can't, you know, maybe emotionally process something. Because uh, life's hard, you know, uh, and, and things get tough. And so, yeah, I think it's both a, a practice um, of challenging myself lyrically and and with genres and we know as soon as I get comfortable with an instrument moving forward into something else and and I think that um I don't know that chaos is my muse <laughs> I guess if yeah well that's wonderful you know people it could be friends it could be family it could be you know inspire us uh sometimes it's events things that have happened to us yeah. Uh, it's also in some of the best artists, and I think you alluded to this, um, is when you have pent up uh, emotionals or feelings or thoughts, and you're looking for a release valve, right? A way to channel that into something artistic and constructive yeah. um, and and being able to and and I, I think it's a double talent personally. You know, I, I look at people who write lyrics and they, you know, it's almost as uh, like a great poem. You know, it, it's being able to do this lyricist. But at the same time, there's also the musical component, right? You know, I can take this these beautiful words I've written. Now, how do I sing it? Like how you know how am I going to formulate music to go around these words? And so. You know, you're doing two things at once. And then on top of that, and for our listeners, uh, and I believe you just said this too, you also play an instrument. So, I mean, it's like writing the music, writing the, the lyrics, creating the music that goes with the lyrics, playing an instrument in the... Jeez. Can, <laughs> oh, can, I, can, I rub your, can I rub your shoulder and then go play the lottery? Because you got it all. <laughs> I've been very lucky. I, I, uh, yes, I'm often known as the luckiest unlucky person in the world because, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, what? but yes, I am very, very blessed, uh, with, with having as many outlets as possible, uh, to get through, you know, it's, it's, it's really amazing and songwriting. Uh, I love it. I love every aspect of it. And I love, performing as well you know it's all just so yummy <laughs> and i'm really lucky that i get to that i get to pursue it you know so I, well growing up the the son of uh of, of a folk singer um uh, i was introduced at early age to john denver and you know you're getting old when uh you know you go to work one day and somebody asks you oh who's your favorite singer and i say oh i john denver one of my favorite lyricist and you know the the 20 year old goes who and you're like oh my god you don't know who john they should, denver is. They should know who john denver is in my opinion I, but you know she was yeah. like, who who i'm like oh my do you know who elvis is ever heard of the beatles ever heard you like who else don't you know john okay whatever so he does a song called this old guitar and part of the lyrics are around you know what a friend to have on a cold and lonely night right him and his guitar when you're sitting there alone it's like he can write a song he can you know it, it's almost like you're not alone when it's you and your music yeah. and that that is an amazing uh feeling yeah. um one thing that i'm going to ask and I, everybody uh, who's listening and watching the show live is free to comment if you'd like to come on if you'd like to come on and say hi to Elsa, if you'd like to come on and nobody's going to want to talk to me while you're here, by the way, because we got a real movie star here and Tyson's just, eh. but if you want to come on and say hi to Elsa and maybe wave at me, if, if I may be so graced. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, Cassie will send you a link. You can come on. We can uh, have some speakers. Uh, one thing we love to do in the show is to invite the listeners in um, to participate and and to ask questions and one thing that Manu and I and I, I had a talk with him and we were in complete agreement uh, is that this show uh, we really wanted to do a show that is all about the listeners right we want it to be the audience's needs we're here to serve them and one of the great um, privileges that that artists and actors and, and musicians get to have. 
um, is when you connect with that person. Uh, you've probably heard this, um, and if you haven't, I'm going to tell you now. Um, your music, your acting, uh, changes lives. You know, people will sit there and see you on the screen, or they'll listen to a song, and it will. Stupid camera. It will <laughs> connect them. It will mean something to them. It will change them. Um, I've heard people say that you know, I was. I was ready to commit suicide. I was ready to give up. I was ready to quit. I was ready to, and then I heard this song or I saw this movie or I met this person. And uh, it, it's a joy to, you know, it's a privilege to get to do these shows and get to do movies and get to. And so we really wanted to make this show about our audience, our listeners, and invite them to participate. And, you know, don't just sit here and watch us talk. Call in. Join the conversation. We want to hear from you because you, the listener, uh, you, the person watching this program right now, you're the important person, and we want to hear from you. Uh, Cassie, do we have anybody yet? Uh, you're on mute, Cassie. Uh, the television world and the technical glitches and all the mute buttons <laughs> and all the mute buttons trust me so no i have not gotten anybody to request yet um i have gotten a few comments on your movie and music on youtube but no messages to join the show so if you guys want to pop into our live stream send me a message on twitter there's a link at the bottom of the screen you can see all of my information and as well as Tyson's and Manu's and I'll be waiting for you. All right. So if you're watching, if you're listening and you'd like to uh, join the show, this is, and uh, just to be clear, our, our only our second live video television slash internet. We've never done this before for the last year and a half. It's all been on Twitter spaces. Yeah. So anybody listening would just hit the request button and they would join us. This is a whole new technical level for all of us and it's all brand new and i know people are out there uh trying to figure out how do i how do i do this <laughs> so we're muddling through but it's i not, will say <laughs> oh, no no go ahead it's not easy technology it's hard <laughs> i it. was uh, i got a computer virus uh this was about 10 years ago when i lived in el cajon in an apartment complex 144 units and I must have spent two days like trying to figure out how this virus, how do I get it off? It keeps doing pop-ups. I can't get rid of it. And uh, one of the 12 year old kids in the apartment complex, Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll take care. Went in. he spent five minutes on the computer, got rid of it. Like kids and technology, how, you know, yeah. You know how stupid I felt, you know, 12 year old comes in, gets rid of the virus. And I'm like, um, uh, you know, I I work on computers uh, eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, and I didn't know how to do that. He did. <laughs> they grow up with an Apple iPhone in their hands. It's so different. It's it's so weird. I, I don't know what's going to happen with evolution. You know, who knows what's going to happen? I think about Speak that all the time. <laughs> Speaking of technology, I had, uh, you know what eight track tapes are, right? Yeah. I, I, I had an 8-track tape. And at the time, this is again, 10 years ago, I had uh, a Nintendo 64. It was a cartridge mm -hmm. uh, game. And I remember the kids uh, grabbing some of my 8-tracks, and they were trying to force it into the Nintendo 64. Oh. They wanted to know how to... How do I play this game called Kenny Rogers? How do I... How do I no. That's not a game! Give me that tape! Jesus! No! Oy. Real. <laughs> real thank god they didn't get on my record collection they would have thought they were frisbees uh, i <laughs> you know i spent a long time collecting those uh but but again it's it's interesting to watch the generation before you know coming after you okay. we, you know we talk about life and death and near-death experiences uh when i was a little kid i remember my mom was the heavy right she was the 
the the punisher in chief she was the strict one she's the one who told me i had to go to bed she was but we lived with my grandma my mother's mother and she was the nice one she was the one that would sneak me a candy bar when my mother wasn't looking she was you know so sweet and kind and you know oh everybody loves grandma but mom is mean and and you know now i'm grown up my sister has kids of her own and i i watch from a completely new perspective where you know her kids are looking at her like oh she's the mean strict one and then they're looking at my mother like oh she's the sweet grandma she's so nice she gives us treat that is not the bitch i grew up with i don't know where <laughs> this is coming I'm a from right? person <laughs> right I'm like where were you when i was 5 you're not <laughs> Hell, hello it's nice to meet you <laughs> It gives you that whole new perspective, right? Yeah. You know, as you get older, it's like people change and it's, mm -hmm. you know, and then I had to wonder, I, you know, was my grandma a bitch to my mom? Was she the disciplinary? Like it, it causes, it, it makes you think now in reverse. Like, I wonder if yeah. her grand, my great grandma was the nice one. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. You know, as you get older and you see those changes, Cassie. Oh, we have Katie with us. Katie, uh, uh, El let me introduce Katie, Elsa. Uh, Katie's from England, and it has to be, I'm looking at my clock here, nearly three in the morning where you are, Katie. Oh, my gosh. Welcome. Yes, it's wow. Hello. Hi, it's so great to meet you. <laughs> it's so lovely to meet you as well, and hello, Tyson, my darling. Hello, Katie. <laughs> Yeah, I have to say, I literally just watched the movie before the show started, and I had so many different reactions to it. It, it was, like, unreal. At first, I was like, what the hell is going on? Then I was like, oh, right, that, that's fine. And then it was like, oh, Jesus Christ, you know? And then I was like, oh, my. And then I was just, <laughs> honestly, and then I was just like, Oh, this is not going well at all. And then I was wondering what the hell was going on again. And I'm just like, oh my God, I have to watch this movie about 50 times to like <laughs> properly understand it. But it is so good and it is so deep. Oh, I mean, yes. I love movies that have a very deep, like psychological side to it. And the DT family, I do their heads in with all my psychological stuff, I think, when we're watching Star Trek. But. I, I do like movies like that and, and your music as well. Oh my God, I was crazy once and after Blur. Oh my God. I, I started listening to it and I'm like, well, this is not what I was expecting, but yes. Oh my gosh. That makes me so happy. It is absolutely amazing. And um, I do have one question for you and it is a very girly question. Yes. How can you still walk after wearing those stilettos? Oh my God. It took me literally like two months for my, my pinky toes to stop being numb. They were literally numb. Oh like God. by the end, it was crazy. I thought I got like permanent nerve damage. So like it's, but I didn't, and my toes are totally fine now, but um, yeah, it was so those boots by the end of the, like by the end of the two months, Oh my God, I hated them so much. I can't believe they held up, but they did. Uh, and I think we might've sold them. Somebody might, <laughs> I think someone has them. <laughs> someone bought them, but yeah, it, it's running in those, running in those heels. I mean, that fall in the begin in the very beginning of the movie was very real. It, it was a, I totally just wiped out. And yeah, I was actually going to ask if that was real or not. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, it was crazy. It was like the first take and I just totally ate shit <laughs> and then like grabbed this baseball bat. I was so pissed and it was all just like everything. It was like 4 a.m. I'm in, you know, Van Nuys. So it was crazy. But uh, but yes. <laughs> Uh, I am I am like, well done you, you know, because I looked at those boots that you were wearing in that movie and like I nearly fell over just looking at them. You know, it, 
they were gorgeous boots, but you know, it no. <laughs> yeah, they they were I'm glad I wore them. I'm glad they happened. I'm glad they exist, but nope. You'd have to pay me a lot of money to wear those again. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you, you know, need to ensure your feet and your legs just to like look at them again. You know, well, one thing that that I think took me a while uh, when I started doing these shows with Manu and and maybe uh, Elsa, you you've recognized this now that um, it's easy for an actor, an actress, or a personality to assume that uh, you know they may have fans in the the local market. Uh, but knowing that you have fans on the other side of the world, I mean, what is that like? It's it's like an out of body experience, <laughs> honestly. Um, it's incredible. It's it doesn't make any sense. It really just doesn't make sense. <laughs> but it's I mean, I'm so grateful. I just and I'm so grateful to get to talk to you. This is like a very new experience for me. So. I'm like just soaking it in. I'm and I'm so grateful that it's you know it's you guys and it's you, Katie. Like, just this is just a big. It's a big thing. It's really wonderful. I, I'm. Well, do you know why you have fans on the other side of the world? <laughs> because you can sing, girl. Your <laughs> lyrics are amazing, and you know a lot of your lyrics I can relate to personally. And I know that there are so many other people. I'm going to be sharing your music so much across my social media because Thank you. what I love about certain types of music and and yours, even though, and I will be honest, I'm a very honest, honest person. The type of music that I've listened to so far by you, it's not the type of music I would normally go for, but mm -hmm. what grabbed me was the lyrics, the content, the the meaning behind them, and the relatability. And that is what makes it so beautiful. And this is why I have a very eclectic taste in music. Mm -hmm. But I know that there are a lot of other people out there, including people I know personally, across here in England, no. Who will absolutely love your music? <sighs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I mean, oh I can, can attest to this. I am a very honest person. I say nothing out of flattery. I am just honest. It makes me um, so much. This is why your music is traveling, you know, because it's bloody good laughs. Katie is a regular, and believe me, when she is uninspired, she says so. <laughs> and when she likes something, she says so. Uh, we're coming up on the one-hour mark, uh, and this is a one-hour show. Uh, I am going to ask Elsa if you wouldn't mind at some point maybe coming back and joining us again for the show. Can we have you back as a guest? Absolutely. I would love to. So, I would be honored. Uh, yes, it was great talking to you guys. And I've already know. sent Manu a message, and I said that whenever uh, she has new work material that comes out, we should have her back. Um, and I apologize for our yeah. glitches. Like Tyson said, this is our second time on video. <laughs> You're doing great. But it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, this is really cool. Really well, and you, we couldn't have had a better. Uh, we could not have had a better guest. And I am, I am just so, so, so very pleased. Uh, we're about to wrap the show. We have one uh, 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 final clip, just uh, Manu being Manu. And uh, we'll catch you all back here uh, next Sunday. And Elsa, uh, please keep in touch with myself. You, uh, I'll text you. You have my contact information. You have Manu's contact information. We would love to have you back as many times as uh, you're willing to come back. You've just been back. amazing. <laughs> thank you, guys. Right. Katie, thank you so much. All True. right. Oh, thank thank you. you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Cassie, thank you. All right, Cassie, take us away. Nightly Sunday.
day, six o'clock, we host a little old show. It's called Dangerous Thoughts, where I rock the mic and Tyson talks the talk. We say what we want. It might give you a shock, but it's not shock radio. It's more than that. It's about people thinking and talking right back. We keep the mic open, everyone reports. We got different opinions on the floor. It's called Dangerous Thoughts, Sundays at 6 p.m. The subscript pirate might let you win to express your mind and get it off your chest. It's called Dangerous Thoughts. Tune in Sundays at 6.